Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. These are going to be all my Joker movie Easter eggs and Batman references. There were a ton of Batman comic book Easter eggs, previous Batman films reference, previous versions of the Joker, and other non-comic book films. We're doing a giveaway for movie tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Joker moment. Please do use spoiler tags for at least the next week or so because there's still people that haven't seen the movie yet. And obviously spoiler warning for everything that happens in the movie because we'll be talking about very specific plot points. First big Easter egg starts with the Warner Brothers logo at the beginning of the movie. It's the same logo from Superman 2 with Christopher Reeve. That's because that was the standard Warner Brothers logo for all Warner Brothers movies between 1972 and 1984. It's the very first indicator of when the movie is supposed to take place, even though they never actually tell you what the exact year is during the movie. But what they do have is a couple movie release Easter eggs at the end of the movie, like Zorro the Gay Blade, Wolfen, Excalibur, the Arthur movie. Those were all 1981 movie releases, so we can say it's probably taking place during 1981. The sanitation strike that's going on in Gotham is a reference to the sanitation strikes in real life New York City history through the 70s and 80s and the New York City fiscal crisis of the 70s. Joker's real name Arthur Fleck is not a comic book reference. Todd Phillips said that he picked it because it sounded like Speck or Flake making the Joker as a character seem more insignificant as a person. The social worker he speaks to during the movie is named Deborah Kane in honor of Batman co-creator Bob Kane. The bank where Sophie, his imaginary girlfriend, works is on William Street. That's a reference to Bill Finger, other Batman co-creator. Later we see a subway stop at Robinson Park, another reference to former Batman artist Jerry Robinson. Joker lives in apartment 8J, J for Joker, and 8 because he's the 8th big movie version of the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix's iconic Joker laugh is actually an affliction that he develops as a result of childhood abuse and head trauma. Comic book Joker gets his iconic laugh after he falls into the vat of chemicals in Batman the Killing Joke, undergoing his physical and psychological transformation. There's a more literal Killing Joke Easter egg when he goes to the Charlie Chaplin Modern Times screening, the camera lingers on the protesters holding up signs, one of the signs says Killing Joke. And speaking of that Batman story, Arthur in the movie is also an aspiring comedian, just like Joker was during Killing Joke. There are also two other Joker stories that reference his early comedic ambitions before he became the Joker. There was a tie-in comic book that they made for the Batman 1989 film with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson called The Further Adventures of Joker Anthology, published in 1990, which features Jack Nicholson's Jack Napier character spending his early life scrawling jokes in notebooks just like Arthur does during the movie. There was also an episode of Batman the Animated Series called laugh em Up where they did a version of a Killing Joke origin story showing Joker trying and failing to become a stand-up comedian before he became the Joker. I see what you mean, Alfred. Without the hat and different hair, the Joker. The stand up comedy club that he goes to for practice is called Pogo's, which is named after Pogo the Clown, the alias used by John Wayne Gacy. Arthur's relationship with his deranged mother is a reference to Norman Bates' relationship with his mother in the movie Psycho. And even though I don't totally buy that she was telling the truth about Arthur being Thomas Wayne's son, on the back of her picture, Thomas Wayne's message to her reads, Love your smile, TW, a reference to the Joker's smile. Then a very big Heath Ledger Batman Dark Knight Joker reference at the end of the film when he's painting the smile on his face in blood. You want to know how I got these scars? The actor Brett Cullen in real life who plays Thomas Wayne says that it's his opinion that Thomas Wayne drove Penny crazy 30 years ago and is responsible for her being put in Arkham Asylum. But that's not the opinion of Todd Phillips, the writer and director of the movie. As for whether or not Joker is actually Thomas Wayne's son in the film, Todd Phillips only said that he wrote it that way to make Joker believe that he was Thomas Wayne's son as a way to give him a compelling reason for hating Batman so much later when Batman would eventually become Batman. He didn't say that Penny was telling the truth. Phillips only said that he wanted Joker to believe that it was the truth, not that it was the actual truth. But there is an actual canonical comic book version of Joker that is Thomas Wayne's son, and that is the Batman Who Laughs, because the Batman Who Laughs is a version of Bruce Wayne from the Dark Multiverse who turned into a version of the Joker. 
Joker goes on a date with the fake version of Sophie that he hallucinates, but the date takes place on Jerome Avenue. The character Jerome Valeska on the Gotham TV show turned into the Joker. The crazy dance that the Joker does inside the bathroom is a reference to a Grant Morrison Batman story, Batman number 663, The Clown at Midnight. In it, the dance is meant to be a metaphor for him undergoing a transformation, emerging from a cocoon like a chrysalis as his arms unfurl like he's evolving from a caterpillar into the butterfly Joker. Joker confessing to his crimes on the Murray Franklin TV show on Live Air is both a reference to the Zodiac movie with the Zodiac Killer calling in live to confess, and then Joker killing Murray on live TV is a reference to Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part 2 where the Joker kills an entire live studio audience on TV. Yes. Clown Prince of Crime, Joker. Joker, you've asked for a chance to share your side of things. I'm told you've killed about 600 people. How exactly does your side of that go? That's why I'm going to kill everyone in this room. More fun Batman the Animated Series Easter eggs. The font that Murray Franklin's TV show uses is also the same as the title font from Batman the Animated Series. Earlier in the film, when Joker goes to Wayne Manor and meets Bruce Wayne, Bruce slides down the pole in his treehouse, just like 1966 Adam West Batman. We also wound up meeting the younger version of Alfred during that encounter. But obviously, at the end of the movie, the Waynes are killed outside the theater in Crime Alley, the movies are all Easter eggs for Batman's origin in the comics and other Batman movie origin stories. Zorro the Gay Blade is just an updated version of the mark of Zorro from the original version of his origin story in the 1940s. It's just that that was the version of Zorro playing at that time and the newer version of Zorro was playing in 1981 when this movie is supposed to take place. Excalibur is also a reference to the Batman v Superman opening scene and of course Joe Chill wearing a clown mask killing Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne in front of Bruce Wayne giving us our classic Batman origin story reference. They even do the shot of the pearls flying off. The fact that he's wearing the clown mask is also a wink at the Tim Burton Batman origin story where it was the Joker himself Jack Napier who committed the act instead of comic book Joe Chill. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? You could try to draw references between Batman v Superman and Ben Affleck's version of Batman and this young version of Bruce Wayne. The timeline would line up for those versions. A lot of people wondering how this is tied to the new Batman trilogy that's coming up with Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson because that's supposed to take place during the 90s. The only way that would work out is if that movie takes place in the late 90s because this version of Bruce Wayne looks like he's barely 10 years old. But of course, Todd Phillips was asked this very specific question if this version of the Joker franchise would ever cross over with Matt Reeves' Batman trilogy, and his answer was basically no. Robert Pattinson was just cast as Batman. I know this is a totally different movie, but, um, but uh, do you see those two worlds merging together anytime soon? No. no. Thank you. Definitely not. Most of you also probably noticed the liberal Easter eggs for Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver and the King of Comedy. Joker's origin story from Arthur to Joker follows a very similar path to Travis Bickle's story during Taxi Driver, as well as Robert De Niro's main character from the King of Comedy who seeks to gain recognition and fame through terrible acts. The Joker in the movie is looking for people to notice him. People are finally starting to notice me. There were a lot of visual and story references to both of those movies too, like when Travis Bickle is sort of playing with the gun, dancing around with his shirt off. The Joker is dancing around, accidentally setting the gun off. Sorry, Mom, it was just an old war movie that I was watching. There's also the very notable Charlie Chaplin Easter egg. Modern Times is playing during the movie at Wayne Hall. Joker goes to try and confront Thomas Wayne about his parentage. The plot of Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times movie is all about the plight of the working man during the Great Depression. It's all about class struggle, and class struggle is a big theme of the Joker movie while the clown mask riots are happening outside the theater. That's why they focus so much on the visual differences between the riots in the streets and how crazy, dirty, and awful everything looks to when he steps inside the theater and it's almost like he's stepping into a palace. As far as sequels go, Joaquin Phoenix hasn't really said anything about him coming back to do any more. I'm sure the movie's already broken a couple of October records. It smashed Venom's October record, which was a new all-time record for highest earning October movie release. 
But as I've said in previous Joker movie videos that I've done, my most likely assumption is that they'll just try to do another DC Black Label film with another villain character or another Batman comic book character, just a really focused, smaller film based on a single character. So you get a Riddler movie, or maybe they would try to do a War of Jokes and Riddles movie, where it's basically a Joker versus the Riddler movie with a little bit of Batman stuff in it, but he's not the main character. It's just about the Joker going to war with the Riddler or they do a DC Black Label film about the Penguin or Ra's al Ghul, any of his iconic comic book villains. So if you spotted any big Easter eggs during the movie that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. Let me know if there are any big questions that you have about the film. Well, obviously everyone's still going to be talking about what's real and what's fake about that ending. I've already done a video about the ending of the movie. I'll include a link to that at the end of this and in the description. Congratulations JC4, you're the giveaway winner from my last Big Joker video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everybody click here for my Joker ending scene video and click here for my Joker review. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody put on a happy face. I'll see you guys tonight.